broken the other altar and you have not broken the covenants that your forefathers and everybody made on your behalf if you cannot break that covenant you can do it Mtakatifu na kuita mtakatifu And that is why you will find that people who are born again because witchcraft trails the blood curses trails the blood because of the blood of Jesus Christ Somebody who has entered into the covenant with the blood of Jesus Christ, no witchcraft can befall them. Because witch doctors, they require the blood of sheep, the blood of goats to perform their witchcraft. But now the blood of Jesus, you cannot compare with the blood of bulls, with the blood of any animal that witch doctors or tradition requires. You can't compare. And that is why I'm saying somebody who has entered into this covenant through the blood of Jesus Christ cannot be bewitched. You're not getting... I'm talking about the power... That is in the blood. Huh? I say when you enter into the covenant with God through the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm, no curses from your generation because generational curses, they do what? They look for the, they follow the blood. They follow the blood. The generational curses, they follow the blood. Are you getting what I'm saying? They do what? They follow the, the blood. Whether you are in Busia or you are in Nairobi, generational curses will still follow you to Busia because they do what? They sneeze the blood. They sneeze the blood. They follow the blood. They are uh, after that blood. So, if you belong to that community, you have their blood, and that blood is cast, you are also cast. Now, listen to what the blood of Jesus does. Paul says, cast is the one who is hanged on the cross. And Jesus took all our curses on the cross that we may inherit the what? The blessings of Abraham. How do we inherit the blessings of Abraham? Only if we enter into the covenant with God of Abraham through the blood of Jesus Christ. There is no any other way but the blood of Jesus Christ. If you want to overcome just generational curses, you don't want to look like your sisters, you don't want to look like your brothers, what will make the difference is the covenant you have made with the kingdom of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. will separate you from that blood of curses. You will not have any proverb in your system that my brother is like this. This one also happens to my brother. My brother in, 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 in Mombasa is also like this. My brother in Nairobi is also like this. In every house, you must find this. Let me tell you, you will find those ones in every house except your house. Why? Because your curses were taken on the cross and the blood was shed you are now enter into a covenant with God through the blood of Jesus Christ you are free you are free I'm saying you are free I'm saying you are free and that's why you see when the, the power of the 
blood is touched. Demons cannot withstand the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Just plead the blood of Jesus Christ, demons will not withstand. I'm saying demons will not withstand. And because of corona, we don't have time. We don't have time. There's a lot to be done. What I'm saying, there's a lot to be done to separate you from the uh, covenants that your forefathers had, just to separate you from that so that you may enter into the covenant with God through the blood of Jesus Christ. Demons will resist. Demons will not accept. Power that is in the blood. It doesn't matter what happened before you. What matters is what is happening to you right now. Hmm? Don't, don't come and say, Bishop, you know, in our family, this problem of sickle cell. We have a problem of sickle cell. Do you know what sickle cell is? You can be given pints and pints of blood and after one month, there's no blood in your system. And then you ask me, where do this blood go? You make the whole world to donate for you one person. Blood. Every time they are looking for blood, blood group B, C, G, A, A, A positive, A, A negative, N, N, E, every time. People are contributing and you are taking that blood and nothing happens. Because in your system, there is something, there is a curse they call sickle cell. Sickle cell is after blood. There is nothing. Sickle cell is after blood. Diabetes is, is, is after what? It is after blood. I said blood sugar, it is only found in what? In the blood. Amen. Hypertension affects what? The blood. I have high blood pressure. It just affects the blood. Everything revolves around what? The blood. The blood. But I'm speaking to somebody who is ready. If you have not entered into this covenant through the blood of Jesus Christ, you have a covenant with the God who created you. You cannot separate yourself from the curses of this other blood. You can't until you get into a covenant through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now look at Romans chapter 6 verse 23. It said like this. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. What are we saying here? The spilling or shedding of blood in turn depicts death. If anything touches on your blood, Know that you are heading to somewhere. And what is this? Sin can make its board in the blood.
And Paul is saying, the wages of sin is death. Now the death of sanctioned animal sacrifices through the presentation of their blood. Stood in temporarily for the requirement of death for sinners. Yet the high priest had to return year after year repeatedly with the blood of animals. That is verse 7, chapter 9, we read that the book of Hebrews. We can read verse number 25. Same chapter 9, verse 25. Because it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. That one says, not yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest. Jesus didn't go to the cross several times or yearly. No. Yearly, no. Not even on celebrating Passover, which you called Passover. He did it once and for all. And every time you remember his death, you are alive because of that covenant. And that's why when he was giving them the Lord's table, he says, remember this always. Do this always. Every time you remember the death of Christ Jesus, you are seeing your life. You are living because of his death. The price of our uh, sins was paid fully on the cross. There is no debt you have once you have entered into this covenant through the blood of Jesus Christ. There is no debt upon your head. No. There is life in the blood of Jesus Christ. And you know, a covenant can be kept and a covenant can be broken. And each one of us, willfully, we entered into this covenant. And what is a covenant? A covenant is an agreement with a promise. In short, it is an agreement with a promise. We agree, and then I pledge. And you also put your pledge on the table. And what now is to be kept is the promise. If I said I will not do this to you, I will have to, uh, to keep that one. God says I will do this for you. And God has to keep it. The Bible says let all men be liars, but God remain faithful. And that's why healing to us, it is an inheritance. It is not a miracle. It is something we walk in. Because by his stripes we were healed. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you believe that Jesus was beaten for you. And he was wounded for you. And he took away your sins on the cross. There is nothing you can pay for your sins. He paid it all. And that's why if you believe that. You came in sick. You can walk out healed. No, no I'm not saying we have just to, to, to do many things 
for you to be healed. It is only believing what happened and believe that it happened for you and it happened for me. I have life. Can walk in life. Somebody in the house? Hebrews 10 for Hebrews chapter 10 verse 4. It says, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away our sins. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats take away our sins. Do you know what? There are so many things connected with the blood. In the village, there was a funeral, and I wanted to contribute, I wanted to support the expenses in that funeral. And I went where some wazes were talking. And what made me not to give a single penny from my pocket was this. It was just a statement. Another old man said, this is a man, the head of the home, we cannot buy meat from the, uh, 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 from the butchery. We cannot go and buy meat from the butchery. The blood must be shed on this ground. And in this home, the blood must be shed. There are so many things that are connected to the blood. And that's why some of us we are getting affected because we are connected to wrong blood. Connected to wrong blood. Some of us, we go to Makumbusho, we go to memorial services, and the blood is shed. And when we come from Makumbusho, demons also follow the blood. Demons, they follow us. The blood. Some of us, we are affected today because we are double dealing. We are building the altar of another covenant and here we are on the altar of a different covenant. And we are really strengthening that covenant. It will not work for you whether you fast and pray whether your spirit fails speaking in tongues, as long as you have not broken the other altar and you have not broken the covenants that your forefathers and everybody made on your behalf, if you cannot break that covenant, you cannot establish this other covenant. It is impossible. The first, you must deal with it. You must destroy that one. The first one. You have to destroy it. Is when now you can establish another covenant. A new covenant. You cannot place a covenant on the top of another one. But for us, it is just like let me go. I want God to, God to bless me. Let me tell you, God has his system of blessing people. He has his ways of blessing people. You cannot come with the, the, those other covenants and then you want to establish another covenant on a, a, a certain covenant. Christians, of course, believe and celebrate that now in Christ and other the terms of a new covenant. The reckoning has come. 
Give me chapter 9, verse number 14. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse number 14. 